you in the back. Move up front. Networking 101. Hey, folks, a couple days ago, I actually posted on my Facebook account. If you could pick any topic on Networking 101, what would you pick? And a couple of uh, my, my Facebook VIPs, uh, Goldie from India, Chelsea from the Philippines, and yeah, I guess even Dwayne from Germany uh, said, BGP, dude, that's what we want to see. And a bunch of other folks requested it. And I thought, hey, man, this is actually a pretty cool topic uh, because BGP uh, gets, the, gets a rap of being pretty darn complex. And with good reason, right? BGP is one of those protocols that um, is so simple, it's also really complex. But, but you guys know I'm a history buff, right? So let me go ahead and explain a little bit of the history of what happens. You know, kind of way back in the day, you know, when the, when the Internet was just a young little cloud, a little Nimbus cloud here, and we just had a few sites to connect to, hey, it's just like building a small network, right? We just use uh, just a simple static route, and we'd define those up, and we'd connect any way we wanted. Piece of cake, right? But then, you know, like everything else, right, the Internet grew, it got, it got a whole lot bigger, and uh, we started having more and more sites, and we needed something with a little bit more, you know, dynamic-ness uh, to it. So then out of that type of need, another protocol was born called EGP. EGP was, was okay, right? Uh, but it wouldn't scale because the Internet really uh, quickly uh, grew out of control. We started adding even more and more and more and more and more. And actually, you know, little dots like Carl Sagan, the big, the, the little blue dot here. Our, our connection just went crazy. We needed something that was infinitely scalable. But also, we needed something that was decentralized, too. Something that would be easy to kind of allow people to kind of set up and allow connections anywhere we wanted in the world. That's where BGP came from. BGP was born out of that need of massive scalability. Now, the first question you need to ask yourself, just like it says in the RFC, do you really need it? Do you really, really honestly need uh, BGP in your network? Here's how to tell. If you're a, a, a big old company, let's say you're techwisetv.com, and we want our own company out here because, or our own presence on the Internet, if you will, um, we're going to be connecting straight to a Tier 1, oops, I spelled that wrong, Tier 1 or Tier 2 provider. And these are the big dogs, right? These are people like British Telecom. These are people like AT&T. These are people like Deutsche Telekom. I mean, these are our big, big dogs that are, that are holding the pipe of, of the Internet. And what we're going to do is we connect to them, but it's not like, a simple IP address, right? It's like, oh, give me your default gateway and I'll set you up. Er, it doesn't work like that. Uh, since this is so scalable and we're hosting, you know, hundreds of thousands of possible routes internally, what we want to do is we need something that transfers information in bulk. And so to transfer all that information in bulk, what we use is we use what's called an autonomous system number, ASN. Um, ASNs are registered. Now, if for whatever reason you use BGP internally, you can't. There are some non-routable or non-peerable um, addresses that you can use, uh, but for the most part, you're going to get an ASN uh, through whatever RN, whatever Internet Assigned Registry of Numbers that you kind of fall under. Um, you're going to get that number from them, and then you're going to peer up uh, what they call peer with your uh, tier one or your tier two provider. And again, these are not standard broadband connections or anything like this. I mean. The smallest line I've ever seen was a T1, and most of the time they're T3s, uh, but, you know, I have seen T1s connect up um, uh, to, to do these as well. But, again, this is really big dog stuff. And when you're peered up with these folks, you're, you'll use the term, you use a lot of different terms in BGP. You use a terminology called speaking. I'm going to speak BGP, and, you, and when you speak it to other speakers, um, you're advertising the routes that are available because... BGP being so scalable and decentralized, understand, it's not like OSPF, right? Remember when you learned OSPF and you have a DR um, and you have a BDR and they're basically very hierarchical and they control the flow of how this information is flowing out and you got stub networks, so on and so forth because you're controlling how that flows and stuff. That doesn't work for the Internet, man. It's got to be decentralized. And so to do that, those agreements are made per ISP. And so as we're setting this up, so let's say it's techwisetv.com, and I've got my Tier 1 connections to multiple providers out there. Let's say that this one's AT&T, and then let's say that this one's British Telecom. And I want my traffic to flow in from the Internet through AT&T and then out through British Telecom. Um, that is when you'd want something like BGP, right? Um, so to set this up, we, we set up these peering agreements. We, we configure that out. We get our numbers from the RN um, and configure this. And we speak, we peer with these partners, and we speak to these folks, and we advertise 
the routes that the world knows how to get to us. Now, I'm going to use 192.19.x.x. I know that that's not a route you can use, uh, but just for, just for the sake of simplicity. Um, what this allows us to do, it allows everybody in the world, so this allows, you know, Rob in Texas to connect through and get this information uh, back out. That's what BGP does. It allows people to find us. It allows those type of massive connectivity to, to you know, hundreds of thousands of servers um, that we have out here. And that's how it works. It, it's incredibly important on the internet. It, it is actually the glue. When you think of the World Wide Web, BGP is the webbing that holds all that stuff together, right? And you can actually look at, let me uh, do a real quick uh, a screen change here real quick. Let me find my mouse. There we go. You can actually see some of this stuff uh, through what's called looking glass servers. Um, so this is, uh, this is one I like to go to, bgp.as. Uh, but you can actually just Google uh, BGP looking glass servers, and it will tell you um, all the, the, the providers that you have. Or you can see by some, these are big dogs, Quest, uh, Hurricane, Level 3. I mean, these are the big dog providers that are appearing. And then you can click on their tab and look at what type of relation or what the status uh, of their networks are out here by whatever parameters that you're looking for. All of them are available uh, in this uh, type of service. And, uh, and, and so it's pretty darn high end. We really want people to be able to see the transparency uh, inside of BGP. But the most important thing about this that I really want everybody to take away from, from a networking 101, is that BGP is a lot more, as you learn academically, that it's a distance vector protocol. But, and that is true, right? But it's as true as much as saying that anything with four wheels is a car, you know? It's like, well, come on, there's some exceptions here. Yes, at its heart it does that stuff, but there's a lot more. We use a lot different terms and stuff. So start looking at, when you're looking at learning BGP, setting us up for exams, trying to get the feel for it, that this is a very enterprise ISP class type of protocol. You should be exposed to it. You need to know it uh, and really get a feel for it. Uh, but there's a lot you can do because remember, as I said in this example here, I'm controlling my traffic coming in and then leaving the network. And then I have all these different ways to confederate and set up and how this traffic is going to move, all that stuff. You've got so many options uh, to set this up. But again, you just can't randomly peer and do this stuff. These are pre-signed agreements because it is so decentralized that this is just not like, oh, I'm going to set this up on a peer with somebody because it's got to be a two-way agreement. And you're doing this stuff kind of back and forth on the phone as you're configuring it to making sure your work. So don't be afraid of learning BGP and the complexities of it. It's really going to make you a lot better engineer and stuff. And truthfully, if you ever get a chance to mess with your career or follow somebody that's actually really good at it and stuff, definitely take a look because it is totally, totally worth it.